Clement Figueroa was a highly respected man, an engineer and a university professor. He died in 1908, just after his patent was granted. His patent for a free energy generator was degraded through so-called water damage. An attempted reconstruction of his drawing in his patent is here. You have a row of primary electromagnets which he marks as S. There's a row of secondary electromagnets which are marked as Y and a row of primary electromagnets marked as M. Now those are connected through uh, wire wound resistors through to a switching device which he uses to explain the operation. The colouring in this particular image is caused by the water damage. Now I understand the diagram to be effectively this here. The primary uh, electromagnets are wired in series on both sides and the secondary magnets, or electromagnets I should say, are wired in series as well. They go through a series of wire, round, wire or wound resistors through to a switching device which is a circular commutator with a um, contactor arm which is marked O in the drawing which is driven round by a small electric motor. The commuter arm connects across two of the contacts which are connected to the wires in any given position. Now that arrangement gives the switching sequence 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And it repeats that sequence over and over and over again. Now the general circuit is, is like this. You have primary uh, electromagnets and you have secondary electromagnets to give the output. There is a battery of some description which powers the circuitry. There are wire wound high powered resistors in between and the switching device selects the number of resistors between the battery and each of the two sides of the primary electromagnets and that is the design of his generator. The reason for the unusual switching is to progressively alter the ratio of the current flowing through the two sets of primary electromagnets which are shown in green. This is a clever design which avoids the Lenz law effect and it is effectively a split transformer. There's always current flowing through every primary electromagnet and that current never changes direction nor is it ever interrupted and so there's never any back EMF magnetic field to deal with. The coils in the middle of the diagram are wire, wire wound resistors of high power and the position of the switching arm determines how many of those resistors are between the battery and each set of primary electro electromagnets. Now that causes a repeating change in current strength between the two sets of electromagnets. The pattern marks one set of electromagnets as S and the other set as N, but those reference letters are misleading and do not, repeat not, refer to magnetic poles. The magnetic poles generated will have either two north poles facing each other or two p south poles facing each other. The change in current strength causes a varying magnetic field in the core of the secondary electromagnet shown in yellow and that produces the electrical output from the generator and that output was 500 volts for, for Figura's prototype. You will notice that the pattern drawing shows seven electromagnets in each of the two chains of primary electromagnets. I assure you that the person preparing the pattern did not love drawing so much that he just had to draw 14 electromagnets instead of just two. No, there's a reason that there are two sets of seven. Perhaps this is just a way to raise the output voltage and output power. You tell me. 
In 1908, electronic components were not readily available like they are today. Therefore, it's now possible to use an electronic circuit instead of a motor and a wiper arm. However, doing that changes the quality of the switching, and it's not at all clear what effect that might have. But it needs to be stressed that the commutator shown in the patent is only for explanation purposes, and so does not actually form part of the design, and indeed it may have been included as deliberate misdirection. However, if we do include the commutator, the description should hold, and so the generator should perform as described. It's been suggested that switching could be performed like this, as shown in this diagram here. This is a continuous rheostat. Um, the input power comes to a connector which connects with the shaft of the system, which is driven by the motor, and that connects through an arm to each of the turns which are wound round the body of the device itself. One end of the uh, wiring is connected to set N primary magnets and the other end of the wiring is connected to set S of the primary electromagnets. Uh, it's a continuously switching rheostat. You wind it on an iron core. The core is wound with thick wire, perhaps American wire gauge number 10 or 12 standard wire gauge. We're talking 2.3 by 2.3 millimeters square wire. The turns of wire should be tight, touching, the side by s touching each other side by side and sitting flat across the top of the, um, the body of the iron core. The insulation is removed from the top strip so that two turns can be connected at any given time by a sliding brush. The brush actually shown here is maybe slightly long. It could be shorter than that. With that system, the overall arrangement is like this. You have your sliding contact, which is connected through the two sets of ele primary electromagnets, which are both powered from the battery minus. And you have a whole row of secondary electromagnets whose uh, electrical eff effect is altered by the strength of current flowing through each of the two sides. And this switching arrangement here puts a strong current through this side at one point and a weak current through this side at the same point. And it then turns round and puts a weak current through here and a strong current through there. And that has the effect of wobbling the balance point that is formed between the two uh, magnetic fields co caused by the primary electromagnet. Wob it wobbles that backwards and forwards through the winding of these secondary output electromagnets. And that generates a serious output. Now, while the above sketch shows a 12-volt battery, there's no reason why the battery should not be 24-volt or 48-volt, um, especially if the wire used to wind the electromagnets is smaller diameter. The strength of the magnetic field produced by an electromagnet is not related to the amount of power fed to the electromagnet. A larger number of turns of thinner wire with a small current flowing through it can create a stronger magnetic field than a few turns of thick wire with a large current flowing through those turns. It's perfectly possible to produce the same switching using semiconductors. In spite of the wire-wound wire resistor bank having only eight connection points, the switching has to have 16 outputs due to the backward and forward switching sequence which is used. A solid-state 16-way switching module can be constructed from two CD4017 divide by 10 integrated circuits. This is what uh, CD4017 looks like. These are what the output pins and input pins are on the chip. Now in this circuit you have an ordinary uh, NE5555 
timer chip producing a square wave output which is the clock input for the two divide by tens. The clock input is fed to the first of these two and that generates outputs 1 to 9 and generating output 10 feeds the AND gate across the AND gate from a CD4081 across to the second divide by 10 chip and that generates outputs 10 to 16 and the final uh, output on this chip is fed back to the reset on the first chip so that you get uh, an exact divide by 16 rather than divide by 20. The yellow numbers on these, this diagram are the actual pin numbers on the chip. The green numbers are the physical outputs that you want in your circuit. Now this arrangement gives 16 outputs in sequence. So we want to use two of those outputs to connect together in order to match the mechanical switching which Slemon showed. Now personally I'm reluctant to connect two outputs directly together although that might be allowable and so I prefer to use an isolation diode perhaps a, a 1N4148 on each of the outputs. But we need to com combine two of the output pins to give the connection points that are needed to drive the wire wound resistors connection points 1 through 8. And these are the chip and pin numbers that you connect together to produce that effect. Now we would use 8 power transistors to power up each resistor connection point in the sequence required. As mechanical switching was used by Clement it didn't matter which way around the battery was connected. We can match the switching exactly if we use PNP power transistors or P-channel FETs. That would be an arrangement like this here. We are not that enthusiastic about PNP transistors so if we're willing to switch the battery round and we could get the same effect by connecting the other ends of the primary coils to the battery we we'll give exactly the same um, magnetic effect from the coil and its core. So if we do that we have our same two uh, divide by 10 uh, integrated circuit chips um, connected by diodes to prevent the outputs messing with each other and that then drives a, a blocking resistor or a barrier resistor to provide current to the base of the NPN transistor uh, and so power up the particular wire, round, wire wound resistor. Now only two of these are shown connected here for clarity but there are actually eight of them. If you show all eight it gets difficult to see. A possible layout is shown here using standard strip board but you don't have to do that of course. Now a contributor who doesn't want his name known. He prefers to remain anonymous. He doesn't like the circuit arrangement shown above. He prefers the following circuit which he's built and tested. And that is his arrangement for doing the circuit itself. Now he uses transistors which are Darlington transistors meaning they've got two transistors connected together inside the one package. The ones he used are BDX53 now the BDX53 transistor is a nice transistor but the odds are you will not find it everywhere around the world. A lot of places in the world, typically like India and so on, do not have much in the way of transistors available for purchase. Uh, you might get the TIP132 transistor uh, which is also a Darlington with a gain of at least a thousand and if supplies are difficult in your area then if you use the 2N2222 and the 2N3055 or the easier version the TIP3055 as shown originally you get exactly the same effect. Now the 2N2222 and the 2N3055 are available almost everywhere in the world so that's why they're shown even though they're elderly transistors. 
The actual transistor connections are shown here, so you can see the way that they connect in the circuit. Now, an experienced experimenter called Whoopi has posted a video of a quick experiment to test the working principle of this Figura design. His video is at this link here, and in it he short circuits the secondary winding, showing that the input power is totally unaffected by the level of output current draw from the secondary. It's reported that Clement Figura ran a 20 horsepower motor with his prototype, and that's 15 kilowatts if the motor was fully loaded. That's easily enough to power a household. Please note that the cores of the electromagnets are not laminated, but instead are solid iron. In 2012, a contributor whose ID is Wonju Bajak started a forum with this link here to investigate and develop Figura's designs. And member Hanlon of that group, Hanlon 1492, has contributed enormously by producing English translation of Figura's patents.